Hello, it's me, Recky, and welcome back for another military reaction with good old Recky. We're gonna check out the channel called Military World. And the video, it's <clears throat> title, it's finally U.S. Air Force declared SR-72 Dark Star, uh, Dark Star as real. And uh, <clears throat> if I'm not completely mistaken, we have watched a video about SR-71. And it's us LA Speed story about the pilot Brian Schul. Uh If you haven't checked it out, you it's located in the playlist called "Get Educated." Uh, maybe I can get it up here somewhere for you guys to actually see that. Other than that, I am loving the name Dark Star. It's going to look like a futuristic alien vessel, and I'm going to get goosebumps. If you do enjoy the content, don't forget to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. If you haven't checked out Military World yet, link for the channel and for this video we're going to watch is located in the description. Go there and give them the support that they so much deserve. We said thank you so much to the channel members of the Patreon. Thank you so much for the excellent support. A big shout out to the Supreme Tier donators over by Patreon. And of course, Cat here. On Patreon, on channel membership. A personal shout out goes to the ultimate supporters Deja, Wald, Dwayne, Dana, Troy, Robert, Matt, Lon. And Barbara, amazing list right there. Let's do this. SR seventy two, freaking Dark Star. There are some planes that are out of this world, literally. These are ones that can fly on the edge of space and reach speeds that others could only dream of. Today, we're going to look at the real life planes that inspired the Top Gun Maverick's breathless opening scene. The retired SR-71 Blackbird and the exciting prospect that is the SR-72 Dark Star. But before we get started, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more just like it, remember to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get more sent straight to your notifications. Before the SR-71 became the most advanced and recognizable plane in the world when it first flew in the 60s, there was another similar military aircraft. The Lockheed U-2 subsonic high-altitude reconnaissance plane that first flew in 1955. It was built as a spy plane to get information about the Soviets, but Russian developments in the radar and missile fields meant the U-Bird was not fit for that purpose. This was proven when Francis Gary Powers was shot down flying one in 1960. The US Air Force needed something that could literally go under the radar and fly extremely fast in the process. The requirements for this new aircraft were clear, a cruising speed well over Mach 3, a cruising altitude over 80,000 feet, and a very low radar signature over a wide band of frequencies. On top yeah. of this, electronic countermeasures and advanced communications gear were needed, as well as at least two engines for safety reasons. All of this created massive challenges, especially when it came to wildly changing temperatures the plane would have to endure. This ruled out aluminum as a basic construction material, so various alloys of titanium and stainless steel needed to be used for the shell. Not only this, but the development of high-temperature plastics for radomes and other structures, new hydraulic fluid, greases, electric wiring and plugs, and a whole host of other bespoke equipment to prevent the plane from burning up. Cooling the cockpit was also a challenge. The X-15 research plane could reach double the speeds of this proposed design, but it didn't need to be in the air for so long. The design team needed to figure that out, as well as burying the retraction wells of the landing gear in the fuselage fuel tanks to avoid the rubber tires overheating. Twelve proposals were presented to the Air Force for this new plane, and the twelfth was given the go-ahead to proceed to the prototype phase. In 1960, twelve aircraft were produced. A year later, a strategic reconnaissance bomber version of the plane, then known as YF-12A, was given the green light but had significant opposition from parts of the Air Force that wanted to work on the B-70 program, a plane five times its weight and size than the SR-71. However, testing progress continued and in December of 1962, the design team at Lockheed were finally put on contract to build the first group of six SR-71s. The first YF-12A prototype flew in August of the following year. With a plane pushing the boundaries of what was possible at the time, it was no wonder that the program still had significant problems to overcome. 
The alloy used to build the plane was complex, as well as the bespoke fuel needed to make it through the crazy changes in temperature. Then the engine the started sucking up objects <laughs> on the runways, and when all that was rectified, people were complaining that the sonic boom caused by the plane was scaring animals and smashing windows. Shit. The SR-71, in its finished state, first flew in late 1964 and entered service a year later. Despite concerns about in-flight refueling, this actually turned out to be very routine in practice. The plane was refueled tens of thousands of times before its second retirement in 1998, and it also exceeded Mach 3 countless times. It could operate safely at a maximum speed of Mach 3.3 at an altitude of more than 16 miles above the Earth. Holy Other aircraft would approach this speed, but only for short periods of time. Therefore, the SR-71 holds the world speed record for manned air-breathing jet aircraft. The SR-71 was taken out of service as its Cold War requirements became less of a priority, and the use of satellites for reconnaissance only made the plane less fit for that purpose. But Lockheed are now developing a new version of the Blackbird. This is the SR-72, known as Son of Blackbird to its parents, Lockheed Martin, and known as the SR-72 Dark Star thanks to the appearance of a similar plane in Top Gun Maverick. I love that. I've, I've seen the movie. It's not really uh, uh, it's It's a good movie, but I'm really loving the design. Although the Dark Star version seen in the movie is fiction, it's based very much on fact. Firstly, the designation SR-72 is the natural successor for the SR-71. It also looks like a Skunk Works concept art for a real uncrewed SR-72. Skunk Works is the Lockheed division that developed the SR-71 back in the 50s and 60s. The real hypersonic strategic reconnaissance SR-72 aircraft was first announced back in 2016 with a long blended wing, fuselage, oh, and tiny wings. The, hatch. the clue that this plane belonged to Lockheed was the Skunk Works logo that can be seen on the tail fin, and former Lockheed CEO Marilyn Hewson had been seen saying that the plane was a Mach 6 capable jet. Tom Cruise's SR-72 in Maverick shares many similarities with the rendering that Lockheed Martin released on its website, including the Skunk Works logo on the tail. However, the part of the plane that looks different is the pilot's cockpit window on both sides of the Dark Star. The real-world SR-72 is thought to be uncrewed and would not need a window. Oh. There have been rumors of an unmanned subscale aircraft flying into the U.S. Air Force's Plant 42 Skunk Works headquarters at Palmdale since around 2017, Jesus. but little is still known about the plane. This isn't surprising, considering the SR-71 remained a secret for 10 years. However, in the 21st century, it's a lot harder to keep things a secret, and the SR-72 is reported to be a very low observable, able to reach Mach 6 plus, and difficult to intercept if detected. This would make the SR-71's successor almost twice as powerful as the plane it was based on. The unconfirmed reports on the follow-up aircraft have been floating around since 2007. Various sources have reported since then Get? that Lockheed Martin was developing a hypersonic plane able to fly six times the speed of sound, or Mach 6, or around 4,000 miles per hour. Other reports have stated that Lockheed has been testing a new scramjet engine that would fit the description of one needed for this kind of speed. They have collaborated with Aerojet Rocketdyne in 2006. This has led to speculation that the SR-72 is to have an air-breathing hypersonic propulsion system. This could give it the ability to accelerate from a standstill to Mach 6 using the same engine. Engine testing is thought to have been carried out in 2017. Although Lockheed Martin has stayed silent on the details of the project, Top Gun Maverick gave an opportunity for the world to get a sneak peek at what the company might consider a concept for the SR-72 as they collaborated on the movie's production. This kind of prospect meant that the Chinese were very keen to get a look at the Dark Star on set for any clues as to what the real thing might look like. Producer Jerry Bruckheimer told media sources that Chinese satellites changed course to try and photograph the mock-up plane. Some experts have suggested that the real SR-72 may be adapted to operate as a bomber, but this would present some serious challenges that even Skunk Works might not be able to overcome. I, I feel like that there is, uh, it's, it's still a really a secret because uh, it claims it's real, 
but I, I don't know. I'm getting a feeling that it's it's still very covert. It's like a, it's a don't 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 talk. Do we don't talk about Fight Club? To release a bomb and target it accurately would be almost impossible at Mach 6 speeds. Also, the plane would need hundreds of miles to make a turn and super powerful guidance computers to line up targets that would be 80,000 feet below. Then there's the small matter of opening up the plane at 4,000 miles per hour to release a bomb. At those kinds of speeds, it's likely the aircraft would fall apart. However, whatever guise the plan eventually takes, and whatever it's eventually called, be it Dark Star or something else, the follow-up to the SR-71 is a very exciting prospect uh. and promises to push the boundaries of what's possible with aeronautical engineering, just like the SR-71 did back in the 60s. What are your thoughts on the SR-71 and 72? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe to Military World to get our latest videos straight to your notifications. Felt like it was a an ever like a, a clickbait thing because I think it's the second time I actually tried to uh, find a video that actually shows the uh, the SR seventy two. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of weird that they. That, I feel like it's a bit clickbaity. Uh, it's real. It's 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 here. But then again, we don't get any information about it. I think it's the second video I actually watched, and I, I was hoping that this was the video that actually showed uh, some <clears throat> I don't know some some information of the, like real life pictures and not from the movie Maverick Two or, or whatever video name uh, the film is. And I'm I'm kind of a I'm kind of a sad that this is the the second time I get duped by by it and and I, I might be I might be completely Ricky there's a lot of pictures of it you didn't you didn't see it you, you big dummy uh, but I feel like it's the second time I actually got duped by by it so I, I might be wrong if I'm if I'm going into my uh, control panel or my YouTube studio and go to SR seventy two uh, there's there's definitely uh, one video about it, and it's a blackbird as well. So th it is what it is. Hopefully, one day we'll actually see the video uh, of the Death Star, or whatever it's called, or will be called, because I am super interested in actually looking for the next generation of blackbirds. It was SR seventy one? Seventy one is blackbird, I think. If I'm not completely mistaken. Either way, if you did enjoy the content, don't forget to smack the like and, of course, hit that subscribe. That's something I would greatly appreciate. Until next time, I'm Ricky. You stay safe.